Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss access business loss limitation. I'm going to abbreviate this as EBLL. What is the big idea of the access business loss limitation? Well, the point or the goal or the purpose is to limit the amount of non-business income that can be sheltered from taxes as a result of business losses. So the idea of this is you're going to have I'm just going to put here W-2. W-2 means wages. It doesn't have to be wages. You could also have other income from 1099 miscellaneous commission, income that you work for. And this income is taxable. So the key is to create the new rule where you don't generate losses large enough. Here are the losses. You don't generate losses large enough that's going to offset all your taxable income. So they want to limit non-business income that can be sheltered so you cannot shelter this if you have losses and you can deduct those losses against this income you can shelter them so if a non-corporate taxpayer has excess business loss for the year it's not allowed so what is not excess business loss it's going to be defined in a quantitative number but the point is they want to limit you instead it's carried forward and treated as part of the taxpayers nol carry forward in subsequent year so if you have excess business loss and what is excess we're going to see the number in a moment then you would carry the remainder as nol carried forward for subsequent year simply put the taxpayer is allowed to deduct net business loss which is business deduction that's an excess of business income up to a threshold amount up to a certain amount and this amount is revised every year to account for inflation for example for year 2022 the amount for a single taxpayer is 270,000 on and for married filing jointly 540,000 simply put excess business loss limitation is the final limitation after we take into account the basis the tax basis at risk amount and then the passive activity loss rule now if you don't know what tax basis at risk amount passive activity loss Please view the prior recording. All the, I will work an example showing you how access business loss limitation and the other factors such as tax basis, risk amount, and passive activity loss, they all interact together. But the access business loss is the final, is the last limitation that applies to the deduction of the taxpayer loss is the access business loss limitation. Now we're going to start with a simple example. What does that mean? It means I'm going to show you exactly what access business loss is separately by itself so you understand what it means and it's a very simple concept then we're going to work another couple examples integrating ebll with at risk rule at risk amount pass and passive activity loss before we look at the example i would like to share with you an announcement about my company farhatlectures.com before we proceed i would like to invite you to visit farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Starting with this example, in 2022, Adam, a single taxpayer, operates a business in which he materi materially participate. So Adam is running the business. Adam is active. His business generates gross income of 320000 and deductions of 700000 resulting in a loss of 280. Not a good year. Now, this large loss resulted from the acquisition of equipment for which Adam immediately expensed. And as a result, Adam had a large loss. What can we do with this loss? Well, prior to this rule, prior to the excess business loss limitation, well, the full amount would be deductible as NOL against active income because Adam is materially participating. It's active, is running the business. Now, Adam is limited to only 270 why? Because single for 2022, you are limited to 270. So what's going to happen? Adam can deduct 270, assuming he got income from other sources. And the 10,000 remaining will be carried over for future year. Now, if Adam was married filing jointly, 
then he can deduct the full amount because the limit for 2022 is 540,000. And every time I mention the year 2022, it means if you are listening to this recording in 2024, 2025 and forward, that number could change. So it's subject to inflation. Now, this is what I this is what I meant by simple, straightforward example. Now I'm going to look at another example where it's a little bit more involved. During the tax year 20X3, Alex earned the following income. Interest income of 10,000, share of XYC, X and Y partnership, ordinary income. Alex owns 5% interest and does not materially, materially participate. So that's a passive, passive income. Real estate income, 6,000. What do we assume? We always assume it's passive. Wages of 82,000. Royalty income of 210,000. And by the way, the interest is portfolio income. The royalty is portfolio income and wages is active income. Just I'm, I'm putting them in a different bucket. In addition, Alex has a 6% partner, is a six per, was a 6% partner, an A and B partnership for which it's reported ordinary business loss. So the partnership reported 440,000 and Alex owns 6% of that. Again, uh, in this situation, also, Alex is passive. Alex is not is not an active in this partnership. Alex tax basis in the partnership of AMB was twenty seven thousand, and his at risk basis is twenty one thousand. Uh, the part the basis is twenty seven. The at risk is twenty one. The difference between them could, could be a non recourse loan. That's why the difference between them. So you just you know you, you need to understand the difference between how do we compute the tax basis, how do we compute the at risk basis, and we did so in a prior recording. But basically, at risk basis is tax basis minus non recourse non recourse liability. Now, what is the amount of loss that Alex may deduct in 20X3? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put the different income and losses in separate buckets. So in 20X3, the active income is 82,000. The passive income is 11,200, which is the 5,200 from XY partnership and the rental real estate. And the portfolio income is 12,100, which is interest income plus royalty income. And you could be asked just for that. What is the, what is the income? And we also have a passive loss of 440,000 times 6%, which is 26,400. So the whole question, the whole question revolve around this 26,400. How much can we deduct out of this? How much can we deduct? Well, here's what we're going to have to do. The deduction loss should clear four hurdles. So when, when, we're, when we're trying to find out, how, when we are trying to find out how much can we deduct, we're going to clear four hurdles. The, fir the first hurdle is the tax basis limitation. Okay, The tax basis, Alex has tax basis of 27, which exceeds the, the amount of the loss. Therefore, there is no loss suspended for based on the tax basis because he have enough tax basis. So the tax basis does not limit him in any way, shape or form. However, the at risk limitation, he's only at risk for 21,000. Therefore, what's going to happen, although he had losses of 26,400, now his losses that can be deducted are trimmed down to guess how much? 21,000. Therefore, we already know that 5,400 of the losses are suspended. Why they are suspended? Because, because for the at-risk clause, he cannot deduct them. So that's the first thing. So we're down to 21,000. Next, the passive income limitation. That's the third one. Alex has passive income of 11,200. That's great. Now the 11,200 would reduce, can be deducted against his passive loss. So 26,400 minus 11,200. Now we are down to 9,800. Now, this 9,800 is suspended and carried forward because it's all PAL, passive activity loss. There's nothing we can do with it. So that's the third limitation. Now, the fourth limitation is the access business loss limitation, but it does not apply here. Why? Because the losses are not large because the access business loss limitation start at 270 for single in 2022 and 544 married filing jointly. And Alex is not... Is not uh, is not making that much, he doesn't have that much losses. So there's no, it doesn't apply here. We're gonna work an example where it applies. Let me show you how the limitation works first. Again, we have tax basis of 27, 
the losses are 26,400. Therefore, we have no suspended losses under the tax basis. So Alex has have enough tax basis. Alex does not have enough at-risk basis. He have 21,000 only at-risk amount and the losses are 26,400. Therefore, 5,400 are suspended. Then Alex will use of the 21,000 of allowed losses, deduct 11,200 of the passive income and what he's left with is 9,800 and this is passive activity loss suspended. So he have 5,400 suspended under the at risk rule and 9,800 suspended under the PAL and he was allowed to deduct, he was allowed to deduct how much? He was allowed to deduct 11,200. So simply put, of 26,400, he was able to deduct 11,200 after clearing the hurdles for passive losses. Let me get the calculator and kind of show you how we how we computed the amount. So let me take a look, take a look at the calculator here. And if we take 26,400 minus 11,200, what we're left with is 15,200. What we what we said is 5,400 is suspended because of the at risk rule and 15. 15,200 minus 5,400, what, what remain is 9,800 suspended under the PAL, the passive activity loss, because we don't have any more passive income to deduct this. So make an, take a note of these two figures because we're going to use them shortly on the next slide. Now, let's assume Alex sells his interest in AMB partnership for a gain of 25,000. The following year, he sold this partnership at a gain. What happened when you sell your partnership? When you sell your partnership, your passive losses becomes active basically you be, now you can use them now you can use them what's going to happen how much of the losses can be deducted the 5400 at risk suspended remember of the 5400 now we have a gain of 25000 now we can use the 5400 and we can use the 9800 so those will be deducted now against his capital gain to save on his taxes so the losses that were suspended now they are active means we can use them now because we are doing what selling the business selling the business now let's change the scenario a little bit to kind of use the ebll rule the excess business limitation loss and let's assume alex has a cumulative suspended passive activity losses of four hundred thousand. just accept this for a and b partnership because in the prior example the the, the amounts were small then he sold his partnership his limited partnership. Also assume for that particular year, Alex has 30,000 in passive income from XY, his other partnership, which is passive income, 300,000 in wages. And guess what? He went to Atlantic City and he won $100,000 in gambling. Yeah, right. But just I'm just racking up numbers, but don't, don't gamble, please. Okay. So how much can he deduct in the year of disposal? Remember, in the year of disposal, the 400,000 suspended, now it becomes active. The first thing he can do, he can use it against the 30,000 of passive losses. He's down to 370,000. Now, remember that, that he is a single, single individual, and now this 370 is active. What he can do of the 370, he can only use 270,000 against we're going to take it against his w2 which is 300,000 of w2 he's going to be able to deduct 270 what's left of taxable on his w his w2 is only 30,000 not a bad deal at all so but only he's limited to 270 now before this rule before this rule came into effect which is uh, during the trump's administration 2017 the tax Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, Alex would be able to deduct the whole thing. Now it becomes active. And for the year, he'll be able to wipe out his wages. He will be able to wipe out a large part of his taxable gain, taxable gambling. But because of the rule, he's limited to 270. Now if he was married, filing jointly, he can use the full amount and basically he will have no taxes for that year. So if he deduct 270, what's left is 100,000. Therefore, the remaining 100,000, he's not going to lose them. He's, he's going to be carrying those as forward, forward as net operating loss, NOL, net operating loss. They turn into NOL. They can be deducted in the future against passive activity or active income. So it's, it's not going to go away. It just carry it forward into the future. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Invest in your education. Don't shortchange yourself. 
Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.